I mentioned very briefly Greg LeMond, who is now the only American winner of the Tour de France. Tell us how he kind of came into to your life in terms of your investigations. Well, before he came into my life in terms of the investigation, just say one thing about him. I went on the 1986 tour where he got into a battle with, with his teammate Bernardino and that was the greatest Tour de France I've ever seen. That was an extraordinary race. And Greg LeMond was by some distance the most talented bike racer I've ever seen. I've never seen anybody just look so natural on a bike. He, Greg, even in the middle of a Tour de France, when he made an attack or when he reacted to an attack, he looked like he was just on a fun ride. And, and he had the most extraordinary physiological capacities and the most beautiful shape on the bike. I, I loved the way he rode the bike. And he came into my world because after I brought the stuff out about Lance uh, working with Michele Ferrari, you know, Armstrong, Armstrong basically said, Michele is an honest man. I, I don't apologize for working with him. And I rang up Greg two weeks after the story came out and I said, Greg, what do you make of this? And he said, well, when Lance, when, when Lance won his first Tour de France, I cried. He said, I was so happy. And I totally believed this was a great thing for cycling. He said, but now that I've learned he's working with Ferrari, I have to change my view because I know Ferrari is the dirtiest doctor in doping. I know that from my experience. And he said, Lance should not be with him. And we, we talked about it. And then Greg produced what was in many ways the quotation that would define the whole debate at that time. He said, you know, if Lance's story is true, it's the greatest comeback in the history of sport. If it's not, it's the greatest fraud. And of course, that was just raising the question that it might be a fraud. Armstrong, of course, went insane with anger. And Greg then was vilified by Armstrong. You know, Greg was unbelievable pressure put on him. He lost his bike business. I mean, Armstrong could exercise unbelievable influence if he wanted to, 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 to do you down or damage your business interests or destroy your character. You know, he was, he was a formidable and very dangerous enemy, Lance, and he didn't mind using his power to destroy other people. I think, as you just mentioned, Greg, probably of a lot of people, he had a, he had a lot to lose in terms of business for, for speaking up about Lance Armstrong. He's come recently and, and since the Lance has been found out, as it were, he's almost put himself forward for UCI presidency, so to oversee the sport in the international governing body. Is that something that you could see him do either temporarily or, or long term? Is he the right person for that? I think he could do it on an interim basis, but I don't think Greg has you know, got the kind of personality character to be president of UCI. I think that would tie him down in a way he wouldn't enjoy being tied down. I mean, Greg does lots of things. He's lots of different interests. And uh, he definitely wants to help cycling, and that's why he said he'd be prepared to put himself forward on an interim basis. Um, but cycling needs somebody who would be able to devote a huge amount of time to creating a new form of leadership, and I'm not sure who it will be. But what we are sure about, what everybody is sure about, is that cycling needs new leadership. It needs people that can do the job and be credible. For more videos like this, go to youtube.com forward slash GCN.